Let's take a closer look at differencing disks. So when we're dealing with VHD files, these are the virtual hard disk files, right? So if I'm creating a virtual machine, I need to, in the settings of that virtual machine, point to a hard disk. That will likely be the C drive, or maybe it'll be a data drive of some sort. But the VHD file is where everything that you save to that disk gets saved inside of that file. So obviously the files themselves will live on storage somewhere. Uh, but when it comes to differencing disks, this is a unique kind of disk that we can use to ultimately save a lot of hard drive space uh, on our physical network, on our physical storage devices, right? So this is what it looks like. First of all, I have a VHD file. Now that VHD file might be just a normal dynamically expanding VHD or it could be a fixed size VHD file, but it is a more traditional VHD file. Now perhaps what I'm going to do is I'm going to save a whole lot of data into that VHD file. So it's quite hefty. There's a lot going on in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that as read only. Essentially lock it down. Once I've saved all the stuff in there that I want, I'm going to lock it down. Now, a differencing disk is going to connect to that disk. So if this right here is a differencing disk, then you configure it. Every differencing disk has a parent. So we point to the parent disk. Okay, now, any new changes that I save are going to be saved into that differencing disk. But the user view of that uh, drive is the combination of both of these. So what you end up with is, let's say it's a C drive, you get a consistent view of the C drive that has all of the original stuff saved in it, plus whatever gets saved from that point on into a differencing disk. So the combination of the two of those becomes a single drive, if you will, even though it's stored in two separate files. So what's the real benefit here? Well, what I can do is I can reuse this as a parent to many different um, differencing disks. So I can start to create other differencing disks and point them to the same parent. Here's another one, point it to the same parent, and so on. So now I've got a whole lot of differencing disks out there on my Hyper-V host who are all using the same parent. So they each have their own consistent view of what we might call a C drive. So this might be the C drive for a different virtual machine. They happen to use the same parent. This one here might be the C drive of another virtual machine, but again, using the same parent. So that view of the C drive from that virtual machine's perspective is the same uh, C drive that is just a consistent C drive, but it is in reality made up of two different files. So every one of these C drives, if it, as it were, contain the data that was originally saved in the parent disk. And then only the changes are saved into these individual differencing disks. So ultimately what I've got here now are four virtual machines, all with the same starting point of a C drive. And maybe there were many gigabytes of data that were in that original VHD file. So they all have that same data. But I'm only storing that data once in the parent disk. And then from then on, each of the four virtual machines will continue to uh, uh, save their changes into their individual differencing disk. But the changes might only be a few hundred megabytes worth of changes, not the same many gigs that we started with. So what are you going to do with this? Well, uh, in the example that I gave where I said it was a C drive, odds are all the data that was stored in here was some sort of a Windows operating system, right? We installed the Windows operating system onto that parent disk. We sysprep it. When you run sysprep, you prepare it for image deployment. And then what we can do is we can create virtual machines with differencing disks that all point to that parent. Now, if that is indeed the C drive and is the boot partition, when I turn on that virtual machine, it's going to load up all the content that was in that parent disk. And if that was a sysprepped Windows image, then what I get is the sysprep mini setup, and I've got Windows running on each of these four virtual machines, even though I only installed Windows 
once. And from then on, each of these virtual machines is utilizing the same parent. So it's a way that we can manage Windows image deployment. Now, there's a little bit of disk I.O. overhead when you run virtual machines in this fashion. Now, it's pretty minor, but in, on a production server system, you may not want to do this. This is especially good for training, for testing and development environments, lab environments, where we don't necessarily have massive amounts of hard drive space to pull from. We can quickly deploy uh, new virtual machines in our test environments by using these parent disks, and we're saving a lot of hard drive space. And we can continually reuse that parent disk for many different lab and test scenarios in the future. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that um, because of that slight I.O. overhead that we have on these virtual machines, you certainly don't want to use them in, uh, in production, but a scenario where you might use them in production would be a VDI type scenario, perhaps, where you have virtual machines that are running just you know, Windows client operating systems like Windows 7. Well, they don't have the same disk I.O requirements as a server would. And therefore, it could actually be a really good solution for running Windows desktops on Hyper-V because you're saving yourself a lot of hard drive space. So that's just a quick look at what differencing disks are all about.